What is going on everybody? My name is Earl here and what I have here are two broken MacBooks. These are specifically 11 inch MacBooks and actually, matter of fact, one of these are a fully working one and the other one is actually what you already saw from the previous video, which is, I believe, liquid damage. And as you can see right here, no power, liquid damage. For the most part, you can't really resuscitate this thing. This thing is completely toast. And as you can see, that thing is corroded. But speaking of that, I believe the other parts for this computer can still be salvaged, such as the display, the antenna, whatnot, the fan, heat sink. Going back to what I was saying in the last video, this is another 11 inch MacBook. And as you can see, there's a bit of a gigantic ding over there. This powers on, it does have a broken display. So let's go ahead and boot this thing up. And speaking of that, this isn't really a 2015. Did I mention that one was a 2015? This is a 2011. And how do I know that? Well, it has the good old MagSafe One charger right here. So what can we do with this? Well, if hope is all, we might be able to revive this thing if it has a broken display, and then we can just call it a day. What I'm gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and plug this puppy in. Oh. <laughs> Wrong charger. Ah, much better. Let's go ahead and plug this back in like that. And it's charging. That's actually, oh, oh, there you go. So you can see how bad this thing is. And we'll see what happens. We'll, we'll see what we can do with this computer because, I mean, from the looks of it, he has a broken display. And actually, you could just briefly see there's a flashing folder. So hopefully the SSD is good on this computer, but for the most part, if I actually look closely on the logic board and whatnot on this computer, as you can see, there's really no signs of liquid damage somewhere. So I'm presuming whoever owned this in the past, well, all of these 11 inch MacBooks in the past, they were gonna use this as a parts bin. And the thing is, I double checked, this actually, a 2015 and a 2011 uh, display should fit right in for the 11 inch MacBook Air. Let's start things off by disassembling the 2015 11 inch MacBook right here. You know, the one thing I really love about second generation MacBook Airs with uh, MagSafe 1 and MagSafe 2 is the fact that they're very easy to disassemble. I mean, look at this. The whole thing is basically battery. Back in the day, the most fascinating thing about MacBook Airs is that people do not like the fact that you can't really upgrade any memory, you can't do anything of that sort of matter which is, I mean, totally valid. Back in the day, when this thing first came out, you really can't do much aside from just upgrading the SSD. When people buy these, they're gonna buy this for the rest of their life, for the most part, with either four gigs or eight gigs of RAM and really can't do much afterwards, which is really not necessarily good for the consumer. As funny as this sounds, <laughs> this is actually a much better option now than ever before because you can see you could upgrade your SSD over time. With the newer MacBooks, with the M chips, with the M4 and whatnot, everything is soldered in. And so, you know, what you're seeing now actually with the older M chips, like the M1 MacBook Airs and the M1 MacBook Pros, is that they're going bad. Their SSDs are going bad because Apple, uh, for some reason, decided that it was a good idea to just put eight gigabytes of RAM on those M chips back in 2020 or 21. And the negative part about that is when it comes to not having enough memory, I guess in a way people didn't really assume that the memory didn't matter because when it comes to limited hardware or limited memory, there's only one thing that can really keep its performance and that is memory swapping. And a lot of these uh, M chips have uh, 128, 256 SSDs. And so what happens is that when the buffer of the memory gets full, it switches to the SSD. And over time, if you keep doing that, it will literally kill the whole entire system, especially for computers that you really can't do anything much more than just a paperweight once they die. And so that's exactly what has been going on the past couple of years now where a lot of the M1 chips are beginning to die and you really can't do anything about them because one, they are limited by the fact that, oh man, this thing is hard to turn. Apple decided that it would have been 
a good idea to get $20 out of every consumer by having lesser RAM available as a standard configuration. And a lot of people, let's just be real, don't really have the knowledge of computers. So when they think of Apple, they think of, oh, it's gonna last a long time, but nope, that's really not the case. Anyway, enough of me yapping. We're gonna go ahead and pop this thing out if I can. Let's see here. Should be pretty easy. There you go, look at that. Just flip this thing, I don't really care. Pull these like tabs. Now, it should be fully disassembled. This is the display assembly. Very small, very simple. And honestly, I'm actually looking forward to installing this because I think this might be a perfectly usable computer for someone. You know, what's interesting about this is the fact that the 2011 looks more busier when it comes to the interior right here. I mean, this thing just feels like it's a bit more congested than ever. differences in a 2011 model and a 2015 model. I believe this is for the camera dongle right here. I'm not sure if you can, let me see if I can focus this. That is completely different from this right here on a 2015. And I believe this is the camera module and the light sensor and whatnot. I personally do not mind not having that access. I mean, we have a working logic board. We have a working trackpad and keyboard. We just need a display and it's either not doing this project at all or continuing with this project knowing that we won't have any camera access. Let's go ahead and put this on the new body now. It should be fun right there. Well, uh, let's just be careful. There you go. Very identical. Now I'm curious to see if this even works or not. And voila. Now that we have screwed everything back into place, it's just a matter of putting all the cables and see where we go from there. And I know, I know, I'm gonna replace the thermal paste in a bit. Let me just put everything together. Okay, here we go. MX4 thermal paste, just a little bit of a dab, and we should be good for this one. And obviously, you can't forget about the dang battery. Well, now that we know that this thing starts and we have a new thermal paste, let's hope for the best that everything else is fully functional because I really have not tested. Hold Alt and let's start it up. Well, that's always great knowing that it sounds fantastic. It's booting up to El Capitan. It seems like this is in totally working order. It's charging and hopefully the cycles aren't that high with this battery. And look at that. We have fully successfully booted up to El Capitan. Let's go ahead and check out the specs. Looks like the brightness can still be changed. Keyboard lighting's good. And look at that. We have the upgraded four gigabytes of memory, which is fantastic. I mean, it's not great. We are still very much limited by the memory having four gigs, but it's better than the two gigabytes that these usually come with, especially the student versions of the 2011 MacBooks. This battery only has about 168 cycles. This seems like a very reasonable computer. It might be usable for some people. Let's go ahead and go to disk utility. Okay, so we have 128 gigabyte SSD, which isn't terrible. It is definitely usable today, unlike the 64 gig, which would have been an option. All we have to do now, is click erase, uh, let's just say Macintosh HD, and look at that, the keyboard's working perfect. Erase, and we should probably partition this, so once this is erased, we're gonna partition it into two different drives, so that way we could easily access, oh, I can't even erase it, let's just, <laughs> huh. well, that's interesting. Hmm, that is not great. Hmm, looks like we're not in the clear here. Let me see if Carby Copy Cloner can detect this thing. Hmm, it's reporting read or write errors on Macintosh. Problems with media failure, yep. This might have some 
mechanical failure is on the solid state drive of this computer. Of course, of course, of course, of course, there's always something wrong with these videos. Oh, yep. You could easily replace the SSD, obviously. The issue is that I'm not sure if I want to pay $20 for an SSD and then not use the computer entirely. This laptop isn't fully functional to begin with. On top of that, the SSD is not working. And the difference between the SSD for a 2012 to 2017 blah 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 and a 2011 is completely different. They're not the same, so I don't really have any spare for an SSD. All right, so sit rep. I have a bit of an update here. I managed to format the 120 gigabyte hard drive or SSD internal using Big Sur. And you know, at first, when I click first aid, it would not run it because I think it might have been corrupted. But after I formatted it and changed it to APFS file system, as you can see, it's able to successfully do it again or I guess repair itself. Okay, so looks like it's detecting the Macintosh hard drive right here, the solid state drive internal. Let's click continue and hope for the best. Look at that. Isn't that crazy? Well, all right, ladies and gents, this is quite a bit of a journey so far right here. Let me turn on Mac fan control because it's a bit noisy. This is still the same 2011 11 inch MacBook right here. It's running on its internal hard drive or internal SSD. I'm not sure how long this thing will last, but if you go to storage right now, it's using its physical SSD right here, which is surprising because we thought it would be failing. As a matter of fact, it actually is failing. It's just for some reason, it's in between working and not working. So I'm not sure how long this thing will last, but one thing's for sure, it's a bit wonky. If I go to first aid here, as you can see, it's detecting it. And then there's a weird thing that it can't be mounted. And then it reads it and it doesn't read it. I don't know what's going on with this SSD, but for some reason, right now at this moment in time, it is being detected. And if you go to system report right here, you could see that this is the original Apple SSD. If I can go to, you know, I, I don't know what's going on with this computer, but one thing's for sure, SSDs have a very limited lifespan. This is probably one of those perfect examples where, I mean, it, it sounds about right. This is a 2011 machine. It's very old. Here's the deal too. <laughs> As you guys can see, I'm able to run Mac OS Monterey. However, if, if I build the open core drivers and install it to the internal hard drive, as you can see here, or internal SSD, you'll see that it will basically have an error saying it's failing or it failed to mount. Every time I reboot this thing, I'd have to use my Monterey here, which has the patches for this 2011 MacBook drivers right here. So basically every time I turn it on, I hold Alt, I boot Open Core Legacy Patcher through this, and then boot up to Mac OS Monterey. Anyway, going back to what I was also saying, these are perfectly usable machines. However, because they only has four gigabytes of RAM, it is not plentiful. And actually, if we open Activity Monitor right here, we are already using three gigabytes and we only have one tab right here, which is my YouTube channel. If I open one of the YouTube videos I have here and lower the volume down because it is one in the morning, you can see that it plays videos fine. It plays perfectly fine. And honestly, I'm quite surprised that the speed of this SSD is still pretty good, <laughs> despite it dying. And you can see slight hiccups here and there, but for the most part, you could zoom in, zoom out, zoom in, zoom out. Not an issue. And by the way, these machines only really have a maximum resolution of 1366 by 768, so anything more than that is pretty much redundant. Let's go to the newest MacBook Air. See how much that costs. Let's click buy right here. And voila, look at that. You could basically buy a new MacBook Air on a 2011 MacBook Air. So I believe this is Sandy Bridge. Basically it's a built-in small heater for your room. I mean, this thing is toasty right now. Despite this only having a dual core processor, because it has hyper threading, in a way it kind of helps it along the way of 2025. The only issue is that every time you open an application, if you go to the app store, you open an application, 
it will be pushing more and more of those you know CPUs and so what that does is drains your battery faster runs hotter you know overall it just isn't optimized 2024 applications are just not optimized for these types of machines and in fact I believe the 2011 MacBooks and older did not support any metal support I think 2012 might be a better option you can see we could go to the app store right here using open core legacy patcher we're able to download apps on the app store which is pretty cool on a 2011 machine <laughs> let's go to soundcloud and see if we can pretend that we're oh let's go listen to some music yes we can normally as you can see here and you know let's play some random songs right here so you can see it's very speakers are fantastic right here I would play more but you know this is quite a bit copyright in a way this is my childhood right here mm-hmm where's the sound man can't me you know where's the sound where's the sound that's my favorite part of this game oh my god I butchered that did I overall oh look at that it's fully charged let's unplug it would you look at that man finally for the first time an 11 inch that is somewhat fully working although it doesn't have any cameras it doesn't have any fancy ambient lighting as you can see the keyboard's lighting up right now because you can't really tell if it's day or night <laughs> I love how small this thing is I I'll never get old of how small these are and I know people will say you can always just get these newer MacBooks they're a lot thinner than this and they're so much more powerful but there's something charming about how small this is look how big the Apple logo is compared to the whole entire shell that is something that you know not a lot of people will see nowadays I mean I haven't really seen anybody with an 11 inch an 11 inch MacBook nowadays at a coffee shop or something like that because they always have the, the newer ones and so let's see if this even starts up if I uh oh that's not good oh okay great <laughs> this thing still has a lot of life left if it wasn't for that failing SSD so maybe we'll see this MacBook in the future maybe not but one thing's for sure I hope you guys enjoyed this video don't forget to leave a like comment and subscribe very interesting topic today of MacBooks I mean 2011 15 inch 20 bucks can't ask for more failing hard drive failing SSD all sorts of shenanigans not working keyboard ambient lighting not working camera lots of no's lots of pros lots of cons call it a day right <laughs> I'll see you guys later peace out